Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So if you guys weren't there on the stream yesterday or you're not aware, uh, yesterday was ExileCon's big release, so they were basically showing us uh, all of the stuff they've been working on with PoE 2, which we'll cover in a separate video, but also for the, you know, current PoE that we're playing now, we have a new league coming up um, in about, what, maybe like three weeks or so, uh, and uh, one of the big teasers was reworking the Chieftain Ascendancy. Now, as I am a Righteous Fire player, and most of you guys know me for Righteous Fire, uh, this one does look like it has some potential, so I wanted to go ahead and just jump right in. Um, now, before I get into this, I know that my, my facial expression here is currently blocking uh, one of these Ascendancy nodes. Unfortunately, the Ascendancy is blocking the node does not really help us at all. It has to do with uh, Fist of War support and Ancestral Call, so that's more for attack builds, so we don't really have to worry about that, right? Let's just move right on into the meat. So, I'll be honest, I actually really liked Old Chieftain for RF. I know I didn't cover a lot of content on it, but I do actually have an SSF RF Chieftain that I played before. And I do actually think that I like the Old Chieftain better for Righteous Fire than the new one, but I respect the new identity of this newest Chieftain. So, uh, just to compare what I would do before on Chieftain, is I would go Ramako Sunlight, Chance to Ignite is nice quality of life, Fire Pen is okay for Fire Trap's initial hit, Fire Multi is a, is a prime stat, Hinakora Death Fury applies a full cover in Ash, normally you have to uh, have a bunch of monsters around when you use Infernal Cry to get the top tier, like, highest tier of cover in Ash. This is basically 20% more damage and mobs, uh, mobs move slower. Sallow Cleansing Water, Disgusting Node, Awesome Recovery while uh, while mapping or able to tank targets. Physical Taken is Fire, so that's that's uh, basically physical mitigation, right? 100 Fire Res, which also is 100 Life Regen with the new Mastery Changes, and Unaffected by Ignite is Quality of Life. And Velaco Storm Embrace is Omega Damage because you can just put in uh, Immortal Call and left click and you get Endurance Charge on Kill with this node. So while you're mapping, you have this permanent buffer of rocking your immortal cro or uh, in yeah immortal call which is then generating 15% more damage so you pair Veloco with Hinakora and your character feels really strong anyway though let's talk about new chieftain so new chieftain is more about scaling your maximum elemental res so this is actually pretty interesting because the old chieftain had great physical mitigation with sallow cleansing water uh, because you convert your physical to fire and then you have like a ruby flask plus high max fire res so you are really getting good physical mitigation along with the endurance charges right the new chieftain is literally the exact opposite so what i would say is sallow cleansing water here modifiers to fire resistance apply to cold lightning at 50 percent of their value unaffected by ignite so let, let's keep reading but we're going to come back to this uh, Velaco Storm Embrace modifiers to maximum fire res also apply to maximum cold and lightning. This is disgusting for elemental mitigation, right? The reason for this is it actually brings value to purity of fire, right? I think purity of fire gives a five max fire res. I don't know if that's at 20 or 23. Then you can modify and scale that with aura effect. So let's just say five is the baseline, right? Just looking at the path of building, if you have purity of fire that's five max res so 75 goes to 80 you take like barbarism you're already at 81 imagine on your body armor you have one max fire that's now 82 uh say you're using a three max res shield that's now 85 right maybe you're using a rise of the phoenix that goes up even higher before we're really even getting into any form of nitty mini or nitty gritty min maxing we're already at really high values of uh, maximum fire res this is important for two reasons on chieftain number one he doesn't have any recovery modifiers anymore, so playing Righteous Fire right away is going to be a bit gimmicky, especially as a fresh start. It's definitely possible, right? I just don't know if it's necessarily efficient. However, let's bring this to another topic. Scaling your maximum fire as very high uh, means that you take less damage from your own degen, so you're getting more use out of your own sustain. Another thing is Sallow Cleansing Water. So Sallow Cleansing Water makes me think that you literally will stack... Uh, fire res in almost every slot you can right literally every single slot you can i'm expecting to have like i don't know 300 no more 400 fire res now you would think to yourself that's kind of a waste you're sacrificing your affixes but it's not because if you get a 45 uh for let's say a 40 uh fire res roll on your ring that's 40 fire res 20 cold res 20 lightning res but instead you could just have one singular suffix of 40 fire res now the reasoning of this is because Chieftain has a master, not Chieftain, uh, in general, fire, 
fire mastery has regenerate one life for each one capped fire res so that's the number in your parentheses so if you have 400 fire res you have 400 flat life regen i wouldn't say this is like broken by any means because inquisitor has like permanent conk ground along with uh you know bonuses to consecrated ground along with it affecting your energy shield so way higher sustain juggernaut has i think untiring the node that gives you like 40 percent increased life recovery um yeah life recovery and mitigating physical grants you regen right so both inquisitor and juggernaut still gain the benefit of if i can tank i outscale because you have untiring for jug and you have divine shield for inquisitor and even on some jug builds so i don't know chieftain looks like it's kind of somewhere in between right now right um some other things to talk about though we have Namahu's Flame Advance, and Namahu's Flame Advance is interesting because uh, I don't fully know how it's going to work yet. It says non-unique jewels cause increase and reductions to other damage types in a large radius to be trans transformed to apply to fire damage. The only problem I can see here is increased damage is one of the modifiers that falls off the hardest in PoE from my experience, right? Usually you want to stack like plus fire gems, fire multi, and you can't get a lot of that from the tree, right? Neither can you convert, it says specifically it says increases, so it's not like you can convert other dot multi into fire. So I'm just really curious how this is gonna play out. Uh, this is a this is a big game changer for Chieftain. Um, then we have a very weird one, which is the Ramako Sunlight. Nearby enemies have no fire res against damage over time while you are stationary. I can see one potential use for this, and that is when you are mapping and you have, for example, monsters have bonus LE res. Monsters gain endurance charges. Monsters are possessed by Warlord's Grip. Um, you know, monsters are fire and ignite resistant from the Arc Nemesis mod. All of these modifiers make monsters insanely tanky. Ramako Sunlight completely negates that. But I don't know how smooth it's going to be to clear with, because the whole point of RF, you want to just keep kind of going straight, right? You want to you want to shield charge through your map. While you're shield charging, you're not necessarily stationary, right? Um, for single target, I can understand this more. You get to the map boss and you're just chucking fire traps and the resistance is zero. But then this comes into the flip side of, of the conversation. Is that better than just playing a regular RF where you're using flammability, uh, scorch, um, combustion, um, exposure? These are all things that are kind of automated. It's not like we go out of our way, right? Uh, to get exposure for our build, for example, we spend one point on the passive tree take a uh, minimum exposure of 18 and then we use eldritch currency on our gloves there's not really much that contests that so that's like already minus 18 right and then flammability is quite literally just a button press that also triggers life tap so that's not really going far out of our way legacy of fury automates scorch and minuses res that's a chase item regardless so that's again automated right um so these are all factors that it's not like we really go far out of our way to achieve them they're just there Combustion is a very good support gem for Fire Trap for a number of reasons. Number one, minusing res increases the damage of your Fire Trap. And number two, it also helps buff your RF because it's minusing their Fire res. And number three, I don't know if I said this part, sorry, the chance to ignite is really good, right? So if you don't ignite, you're not doing as much damage. So Chieftain is kind of like in a weird spot right now. What I will say about Chieftain is I think maybe for attack builds, it seems really good, but I'm not really an attack build player, right? Um... Totems seem pretty interesting for sure from this, right? Definitely got some totem love. Hinakora's Death Fury is something I didn't really talk about because it's such a low proc. Um, maybe if you pair it with a Fire Mastery, so you have like two sources of low, right? So you have um, Burning Enemies have a 3% chance to explode and then 5% chance for 500. But this seems a little gimmicky, so I'm not sure. I don't know. For sure, if you open, like, a Vault Breach on top of a Guardian, it'll probably, like, insta-die, but that kind of is, I don't know, to me, a little bit gimmicky, right? So, I'm not really sure. Chieftain does seem like a really good candidate for Trade League, where you have access to uh, Forbidden Flesh and Flame. Being able to, like, yoink a Velaco Storm Embrace seems kind of crazy, for example. Um, so, that's something that's pretty cool. But, yeah, anyway, that's pretty much about it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. You know, feel free to talk about our boy Chieftain. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, we'll be kind of covering a whole bunch of PoE2 stuff and even current League stuff um, that's coming out on the live stream today. And I'll see what I can do about pumping out some content uh, since they covered so much stuff. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, 
feel free to like share and subscribe and don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box except for sundays see you guys all later